Hello there, how are you doing today? Good. Yeah, are you caffeinated? Yeah. I'm not, but I don't hear you. Alright, so... Um, oh, sure. Hello, hello. You hear me now? It's not an ad. Alright, so... Around 2,500 years ago, um, a Senate somewhere in Greece, in Greece fall because of an uh, earthquake, and they were holding a meeting there. Legend says that Simonides of Sius was able to walk through the rubble and show people where their loved ones were by name. There were over a hundred senators back then. And so he was able to recall not only their names, but their places in, in, in the rubble. I, I, I hope we don't have to do that with our students. Um, but the technique that I'm going to be talking today, um, uh, yeah, the, the history throws as far back as, as that. Uh, it's called the memory palace technique. <coughs> and I use this in my classes fundamentally to learn my students' name. Okay? Um, the problem with new information is that it fades away rather quickly. If you want to recall it for later, you have to make a conscious effort. Traditionally, this means root memorization. <clears throat> However, there are far more effective ways of accomplishing the same thing. Most of the different mnemonic techniques operate under the same set of principles. There are two types of memory, short-term and long-term. To retain new information, you have to somehow link the already link to, to uh, link, link to it already existing long-term memories. Linking happens when you are able to place new information within already established mental landscapes. Linking happens uh, when you make those connections. These landscapes are the mental representations of the world of the world we inhabit, our commuting routes, our current homes, our childhood homes, our favorite playgrounds, parks, etc. Because evolution fine-tune our brains for spatial pattern recognition, linking new information, linking new info to space help us to move it more quickly into the long term. Uh, a memory. So it's it's a rather simple technique. Uh, uh, what you do is, you know, step number one, you know, just kind of close your eyes and think about a route that you do every day. Something that you know very, very well, something that is not only, you know, visual, but that you walk through it, you know, and so on and so forth. You experience it. Once you do that, <coughs> you take that new piece of information, it could be names, it could be you know, sonnets of a poem, it could be <coughs> any sort of piece of information, and you mentally place it, close your eyes, and you mentally place that piece of information into that route. Like, for instance, as today somebody was talking about going to Grand Central, right, and the different steps that we have to make to get there. Similar idea. What you do is, you know, I gotta in order to go to Oslo, I gotta take the, the, the four train. I gotta do X number of stops. All right, I'm gonna place that information right there. There are other mnemonic strategies to to hook that information into uh, the long term or the long term uh, memory landscape, and, and those mnemonic devices have to do with, you know, adding colorful things to that piece of information. In case of names, for instance, you know, you can you can relate it to songs, you can relate it to works of art, you can relate it to anything that is evocative. Sometimes the most outrageous thought you might have are the best ones to put that information into long-term memory. So don't be shy with your imagination to retain that memory. <clears throat> And then at the end, all you have to do is literally, literally right, walk in your head 
through that mental landscape and visually in your in your mind's eye see what the information is all about and um, you can repeat it a few times and once you do that uh, the information will um, will stick for sure um, uh, you know we evolve as, as, as homo sapiens and uh, to, to develop very sophisticated uh, uh, you know, pattern recognition in landscapes because you know our evolution depended on that survival where the foot was where the you know the dangers were and so our brains are already wired for that it's there and, and it's, it's, it's it doesn't escape uh, it's kind of ironic that I'm giving this lecture because for the most part I'm actually the worst at remembering things but when it comes to this conscious effort of retaining information I'm, I can get pretty good at it, and it's because of this little technique that has over, you know, 200, 200, uh, 1,500 uh, years of history. Anyway, that's all for me today. Thank you.